Hey everybody, welcome back to the How Do You Work This Thing <laughs> series, uh, where we're going to talk about delay. Mm -hmm. Now, I will be the first to admit, I'm not the world, I use delay a lot, mm. but I'm not the biggest fan of tinkering around with it and getting settings and, you know, really mastering it. That's not me. Um, I have a few go-to settings that I'm going to show you. But if you can have these down, it's not only going to be a couple of really great kind of gateway delays for you, but it'll set you up for experimenting and, you know, getting a little more particular about your delays too. Yeah. One thing I struggled with in delay, with delay pedals, is that they look, there are a lot of them that look so intimidating. I have a DD20 <sighs> out on my throw, pedal board. I'll throw a picture of it up. And this is coming from a person who's like, I don't know what I want to name. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know anything. I like, I'm fine. I find like knobs and buttons and technology very intimidating, mm -hmm. but somehow, I, I went out and bought that and I bought it years ago. I'll take the spaceship. And, yeah, and then didn't touch it because yeah. I was intimidated by yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't have to be that way though. We have some recommendations for you as far as what pedals, delay pedals you might want to check out. This is my delay pedal. Super simple. It sounds good. has a lot of options on it, but it's not too complicated. That way I just set it and forget it. Um, First off, let's go through some of the controls that you need to be familiar with in order to work your delay pedal. And I will say that this setting I have right here, is like the go-to if you don't know what to do. It's the go-to. You can't really go wrong with it. And we'll get into more about this when we walk through our three presets for you. But uh, delay in this um, on this particular pedal might also be called time. And that's just how fast the repeats are. So if you come down, it gets shorter. Come up, it's it longer. And really long, right? Okay, so for somebody like myself who has um, like a digital screen, yeah. So then you would if another way to set that would be with uh, beats per minute. Beats per minute, or your screen, I believe it displays in milliseconds as well. Mm -hmm. So I would consider an ultra short delay to be like twenty to fifty milliseconds, moderate uh, around a hundred to. Three, 350 and anything above that I would consider long as far as milliseconds. Now, okay. And you can also stomp. And that's the thing that it, it negates all this having to worry about milliseconds. Um, this pedal doesn't have a, uh, a stomp, func I mean, uh, sorry, like a tap tempo function, but pardon my stocking feet. If you hold down this and then just strum on your guitar, the tempo of the song, like that tempo we played at the beginning of this was about here, one, two, three, four. That is the tap tempo. And I have it set to dotted eights right now. We'll get into that more later. But if you have a tap tempo um, function on your um, delay pedal. I guess I call it stomp, but it's tap tempo. Yeah, it's the same thing. Same whatever. thing, okay. Um, <laughs> that can be really nice because we could just tap it to the tempo of the song you're doing and then just forget it. Just set it to whatever song you're doing and it'll sound good and it'll line up. So that is the delay time usually. Uh, feedback is just how many echoes or repeats you get on the end of this. I have it set. It's relatively short. There's like three or four there. If I had it set higher, it keeps going and going and going. Mm. More moderate. You know, it gets like eight or ten in there. That's so like I guess six. you would put that, uh, turn that down um, if you don't want to muddy up. If you don't want to jumble things up. If you don't yeah. want it super, uh, what's the word, ambient, mm. you know. That's just one repeat right there. And I usually have it on two or three, something like that. If I want it really ambient, I might get up to four or five, something like that. So just play around with that. Um, the effects level will be how much of the delay you actually hear. So none versus all the way up. All the way up, the, the repeats are actually louder. Yeah, I noticed that. So. And this just depends on the song you're doing. If it's if you want it to be super subtle, to just add some space, you know, turn it down. If you want it to be really ambient, you might want to uh, turn it up a little bit. But when you're arpeggiating something like that, you don't really hear the delays as delay. You just hear this kind of a whooshy softness that adds some space, you know. Versus nice. if you do something more staccato. Then you hear the delays more. 
So uh, play around with that. And if it's, if things are getting washed out and just undefined sounding and you don't want that, just turn the effects level down and that'll take care of that. Uh, the next knob is where things start to get interesting because it's where a lot of personal preference and uh, what's appropriate for the song takes over and that's the type of delay. And I'll just run through some, some of the more common ones that you're gonna see. The first type is a digital delay. Digital delays are just repeats of the original note that don't lose any of the high end as it rolls off. It's just an exact replication that gets quieter and quieter. And on this one, it's the 2920. You could, this could also be labeled as just digital. Let me turn this up a little bit so you can hear what's going on. So the repeats are just as crisp on digital delay as the original one. It just get quieter and quieter every time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the, if you want like a really defined. To where you can actually tell that there's some. If you want to, you know, where it's really like, yes, there is delay on, then mm -hmm. go digital. Um, if you want something more subtle, like more akin to reverb or something washy, you probably want to go for something that's more um, analog or tape. Analog delay, what it does is there's some high-end roll-off or it's like they take a little bit of the treble out for each repeat. So it's like somebody's turning your tone knob down one number every time on the repeat. So I'm gonna turn that up a little more so you can tell. Mm. So it's a little more subtle. It's not as stark it as a digital delay. a little bit more muffled sounding as, yeah, as it goes. Exactly, it's like yeah. somebody's pulling up a blanket. But I like this one just because you don't have that attack of the note on there, so it makes it a little more subtle, and I just threw my guitar to tune somehow. B string. Okay, so. So something like this. It's not as stark on the delays because it has a high end roll off every time. So um, kind of akin to that, but a little bit different is tape delay. And it still has that kind of degradation of the tone with the repeats, but there are some artifacts like a warbling that mm. get introduced into every repeat because it's based on an old tape machine, like an analog tape would run around, like, you know, a cassette tape, that type of tape, run around, and that's how you would get the repeats. And it might not be able to, let me turn this up a little. That one's a little harder to hear the difference, it is, I think. Than... It's, it gets, so it still has that degradation a little bit. It's not as pronounced, and there's some, a little bit of warbling, almost like chorus, if you know what that is. It'll... So it's a little more lush, but that might not always be the sound you're looking for. But I like that. I usually leave mine actually set on tape because I like those artifacts in the background. They make it a little more randomized sounding. Hmm. Um, let's see. The other one that I'd like to cover with you is just mod. Uh, modulated delay takes your signal and puts a little bit of coarse or detuning with it. You hear the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Hmm. You hear the, it sounds like I, I turned a coarse pedal on, but it's with delay instead. That was a really good example right there. So it's almost like having two effects in one that make it a little more 80s kind of rock ballad oh, yeah, sounding. Yeah. Yeah. So that one I like to use sometimes, but you have to watch it. You can, unless you're looking for a specific sound, you can end up sounding like you're trying to pull the 80s back. Mm -hmm. So those, which, are, which isn't necessarily which? bad. I, I like it. I use yeah. it on um, like not a bad thing. Like uh, <laughs> on tracks that are buried a little bit, like you know, buried in the mix. I use that just to fatten it up. It makes it a little bit lush and provides a nice contrast for whatever else is going on. So those are the main types of delay you're going to encounter. There are other types out there, but if you understand those, then you have a really good start on things. Um, now. Let's get into the different types, of the, the three uh, sample settings that you can take home with you and just use them as a starting point if you don't know what to you know, put your settings on on your, your delay pedal. For that thing we played at the beginning of this video, uh, I believe I had it on tape. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I had it on tape because that's usually what I have. I had the feedback set pretty low. The effect level set, eh. 
kind of moderate. And then I, uh, I just did tap tempo. That's the tempo of the song. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But here's the kicker. I have this um, setting right here, this little notch, this little switch. I have it set to dotted eighth notes. If I had it set to quarter notes, it would be the exact tempo I just tap, uh, tapped in, right? Mm. But when you set it to dotted eighth notes, it had instead of doing quarter notes, it does a little bit faster. And it's it, like a galloping sort of sound? It, it does something where it's like in tempo with the song, but it's mm. off enough to where it makes it a little bit more unpredictable and it ends up fat, just fattening up the sounding, making it more lush. Mm. So let's play that again. Okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mm. So that's something you can't go wrong with. And if you add a little reverb on top of that, it gets really nice sounding. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But it's nothing that's overpowering. Like you'd be, you're almost hard pressed even to, that I have to lay on. I don't you know stop it mm. and if I had it on quarter notes it would be a completely different feel but it's in the tempo of the song so you can do either one like that just either to the tempo of the song with quarter notes but if you want to go to go to dotted eighth notes and just uh, tap in the tempo of whatever song you're doing I heard a lot of uh, guitar players for like church settings tend to use a dotted eighth that's true and that's what I learned it from but I find that it works on any kind of music where you just want a little bit thicker or a spacious of a sound. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're not playing something that's so fast or you know rhythmic that it's jumbling things up, it works with pretty much any style of music. And if you Great. like the sound of the delay, that's the that is the sound I would recommend just sticking your pedal on and leaving it with. Now, the next sound is um, something that I know you're a big John Mayer fan. He uses slapback delay a lot, mm -hmm. and this almost takes the place of reverb. Because um, what it does, let's see, I'm going to use the delay time knob here to just shorten, shorten the delay to where I'm just getting a really fast slide back. Yeah. It almost just sounds like you're in, in a room where Exactly. It's it sounds a... like I'm in a bathroom with my yeah. amp and it's just bouncing off the... That's that, a really good way of putting it actually. Here's bathroom. without it. Here's with it. And here's with just a little bit of reverb from the amp. A little more for you. That it kind of has a similar effect. And I've heard, I've seen people do it this way. And I've seen them do it even shorter to get almost a chorus effect. It sounds like there's two guitars kind of playing in, oh, in yeah, unison. Yeah. And I've seen, um, oh, it was a jazz artist I saw do this, and he did this just to fatten up the sound. That may be a little extreme as far as the effect level, but. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, when you record and you've got two, two, two tracks guitars. Two going. It just fattens it up a little bit. Whoops. and Or, you know, like Brian Setzer. So it's a nice way to create some ambience. That's a, that's my second go-to, which I don't use a lot. Chelsea uses a little bit of it just because of the John Mayer influence mm -hmm. from occasion to occasion. Uh, but like, ha if you do use that, just be careful how much you use because it can kind of take over your sound really quickly. But putting that on with some reverb can have a nice, really big sound even out of a small amp like this. Nice. Okay, my last go-to setting for some delay is what I like to call the ubiquitous long lead, 80s lead guitar delay. And it's just a longer lead that can give a really epic sound um, if you're doing a lead. And anything over like 300, uh, 300 milliseconds, something like that. 
Yeah, something like that. Put a little reverb on, put a little drive on. That's gonna be loud. That sounds pretty epic. <laughs> and that's just a normal, what I would consider like a long delay. If you, if you have the luxury of having a pedal that you could set two delays for, you can set a dotted eighth note delay like shorter to the tempo of the song and then set a longer delay so it gets really wild and lush sounding but it's really great for covering up mistakes uh -huh. and it's really great for just creating um, if you want a bigger sound that sounds epic for a lead that's a really good way to go to but those are my three go-to um, settings that I use for delay if you don't know where to start with those or if you don't know where to start just use those and as you listen to more songs that use delay just try to mimic uh, the time like how fast the delay is going the level of delay and the type of delay and you'll be good to go and you'll get to know your own favorite settings that you like too yeah so we'd love to know what what delay pedal are you using make sure to comment down below and let us know what yeah you, and um, what you recommend or what you're what you're playing around with right now i'm glad you said that because i was going to give some pedal recommendations too if you like simple things that aren't too expensive i would look at an mxr carbon copy that's even simpler than this. Okay. This is also fairly simple. Um, if you want something expensive and complicated, go with the um, a Strymon, uh, whatever, the timeline. Hmm. Or even Tide makes some really great delay pedals too that if you really want to get into delay, to delay, I would give a look at some of those. Um, the this boss, looks so calm. I feel like they should be brewing my coffee too because there's yeah. so many buttons there. <laughs> they should be playing my guitar for me. Yeah, um, so many buttons. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff in between, but those are just two, two groups of extreme examples of not quite, not that bad expensive and mm. simple and then really complicated and expensive. Um, so is there a middle of the road one? Yeah, but like I'm so not into delay as far as gear that uh, it'd be hard for me to nail down um, what earthquaker devices, walrus, walrus um, effects, those types of pedals have some nice and moderate type stuff. Um, you mentioned Boss too, which my pedal's a Boss. Boss yeah. makes some, they have kind of the whole game, but they make nicer stuff and more complicated and less expensive and uh, not as complicated like the DD3. I don't even know what version of the, D the DD series are on now. You know, they're single delay pedal, but those are easy to use. Those are a lot like this. So if you like the Boss brand, go with the DD73, whatever iteration they're on. And um, you have a DD20? Yes. I know that they have a new one out that's kind of replaced that one. It's even more complicated. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but it is cool and it can do a lot of really awesome sounding things. But the, the biggest thing is just getting to know your particular pedal, your gear, and then knowing what sounds you like and how to dial, and knowing it well enough to where you can quickly dial things in if you hear something that's new. All right, so my last question is, how do I set it up in relation to the rest of my pedals? Like, where is it in the chain? Okay, good question. Um, unless you have a reverb pedal, Let's say, pretend this reverb pedal is not there. The delay will usually go last. Okay. Now, that's just kind of a industry standard rule, not even a rule, guideline, where you're probably going to get a good sound if you do that, if you're going straight into the front of the amp. So, delay pedal last, unless you have reverb, reverb, and then reverb might come last. If you want to change the sound up a little bit, you can swap the reverb and delay around. Okay? Uh, and that's only if you're going into the front of the amp. If you're going into the, um, the effects loop of the amp, the... Uh, like on this pedal board, none of the drives or anything on the front uh, would be going into the effects loop. All the drives, you know, volume pedal, tuner, drive pedals would go into the front of the amp, and then the time-based effects, uh, the reverb and delay would go into the effects loop in this order, the same order. So delay first, then reverb. Okay. Cool. So that's it for this discussion on delay pedals. I know we can't cover every facet of delay or answer every question that you may have but this should be enough to get you started and start making some great tones with the gear that you already have now if you want some help with your specific gear setting it up or anything else related to playing the guitar go to guitarfam.com book a private one-on-one -on -one lesson with me there the first one's complimentary so there's no risk yeah, and don't forget to like and subscribe because we have more great videos coming your way and make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss those videos and comment below and let us know what delay pedal you're using or what recommendations you have for yeah. people who are looking for a delay pedal. And that's it. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah.